Blueject, the aerospace defense segment of GenCorp presents the 1988 Robert B. Young Technical Innovation Award. This year honoring Peter Midzinski and Kevin Bortz of the Environmental and Land Use Management Unit in Sacramento. Nancy Geddes and Gene Kessler of Aerojet Tech Systems with Art Kazakian of Aerojet Solid Propulsion and Jack Thomas, Aerojet Electrosystems. The Robert B. Young Technical Innovation Award is presented annually to employees for outstanding achievements in three crucial areas, safety and environmental, quality and manufacturing processes, and products or services. The award was established in 1983 in honor of Bob Young, former Vice President of Engineering at Aerojet. Young played a major role in technology development at Aerojet during a career that spanned 36 years. And now the winners of the 1988 Robert B. Young Technical Innovation Awards. Shrinking availability of hazardous waste dump sites and escalating waste disposal costs prompted Aerojet to design and build this wastewater treatment plant on its 13,000 acre facility in Sacramento. The plant, which received the Industry of the Year Award from the California Water Pollution Control Federation earlier this year, safely treats wastes for five to 10 cents per gallon. That compares to one or two dollars per gallon previously spent for off-site waste disposal. With two million gallons of hazardous waste being generated each year, the benefits are obvious. Project engineer Peter Midzinski and Kevin Bortz, who is responsible for startup and operation of the plant, elaborate. Prior to building a plant, we did some pilot work and some feasibility work and came up with some operations which we felt could do the job. These operations had to meet a few criteria. Some of these were proven technology. We were trying to use as little new technology that we would have to develop as possible. It had to interface with instrumentation and automatic control. The system had to be capable of running in a batch or semi-automatic mode. And we had to be able to segregate our wastes if necessary so we could uh, batch treat on an individual basis. We built the plant. It was started in November of 1986 and it was online by June of 87. Our initial costs that were allocated were $725,000. We actually built the plant at $715,000. What we did down here at the dilute treatment plant is three things. One is metals removal, sol second is solids removal, third is organics removal. Metals removal is accomplished by pH modification followed by lime addition. After that, we go through ultrafiltration, which separates the liquids from the solids. The liquids end up going to the carbon bed absorption where the organics are removed. The solids end up going through the solids removal system. The liquids from that are recirculated back to the metals removal loop, and the solids go to the class one landfill. After carbon absorption, the water goes straight to the sewer. The plant works very well. We remove everything up to detection limits. It's hard to hit a moving target, especially when that target is traveling at hypersonic speeds. To make the game even more challenging, hypersonic speeds create scorching temperatures that can throw missile guidance off course. Now, thanks to the innovative work by Gene Kessler and Nancy Geddes of Aerojet Tech Systems and Art Kazakian of Aerojet Solid Propulsion, the chances of hitting the target are significantly improved. Our team has developed a cool metallic radome working for the Army Strategic Com Defense Command at Huntsville, which allows hypersonic vehicle velocities two to three times those allowed by current uh, radome technology. These current radomes fail due to the scorching heat you get at these velocities, and they won't work either electrically or they fail structurally. This breakthrough has allowed and will allow a whole new family of interceptor vehicles to be built. The radome is constructed of 75 metal platelets. Each platelet is chemically etched with a unique design. The platelets are stacked upon each other and diffusion bonded. At this point, we have created the 14,000 waveguides and the hydraulic system that controls the surface temperature. The platelet stacks are formed into half cones similar to this one here. Each half cone is final machined and precisely welded into the final cone assembly. The role of the Chemical Research and Development Division in the Cool Metal Radome Program was to fill this dielectric material into the many thousands of waveguides or holes on this cone without filling in any of the coolant eject slots above the waveguides. The coolant eject slots are necessary 
to release the coolant that protects the cone from the heat generated during hypersonic flight. The dielectric material protects the sensitive radar equipment inside the cone from the external environment and at the same time provides a radar transparent window so that the missile can seek its target and destroy it. Target activated munition systems such as Aerojet SATARM are designed to neutralize enemy armored vehicles. Jack Thomas has developed a technique that substantially reduces the development and manufacturing cost and also extends the performance and reliability of infrared sensor electronics for the SATARM submunition. We're here at building 170 at Aerojet Electrosystems Company and this is the design entry terminal for the silicon compiler system. This system has been very useful in designing a SATARM digital signal processing chip that has been responsible for saving the company $75 million over the production life of the SATARM program. Through this design system, we've been able to reduce a schedule that conventionally required from two to three years to a one-year period. By using a silicon compiler to implement the complex target discrimination and aim point determination algorithms for the IR sensor part of the sensor uh, electronics.